Just a really quick announcement before we get going. We are launching a major update to our popular basics learning package. It is now fully up to date with Revit 2020. This learning package is made to be fun, simple and efficient. The original version helped thousands of users to learn Revit and the new version is even better. The package includes an ebook PDF, a video tutorial series, an exercise project and a Revit template. If you are interested, go to revitpr.com basics or check the link in the description below. Thank you so much, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and please enjoy this video. Mistake number one, explode DWG file inside Revit. This is number one for a good reason. Exploding a CAD file inside Revit is one of the worst thing that you could ever do. In this example, we have a DWG file. We select it and click on full explode. All the individual lines can be selected. If you go to the manage tab and then to the line styles menu, you will see that Revit automatically created a line style for each individual CAD layer. This is the nightmare of all BIM managers. If you really need to explode CAD files, do it inside the dummy project or inside a family, never inside your main project file. Mistake number two, download free families online. Most Revit families you will find online are absolute garbage. A good Revit family should be lean, efficient and without too many parameters. This is a random family that you can find on popular BIM content websites. Look at the size, almost two megabytes. You should always try to keep families under one megabyte, so it's already a pretty bad sign. Now let's have a look at the family inside Revit. You can already see it has more than 20 random instance parameters. If you go to the type properties, it is even worse. Remember that when something is free, it means that you are the product. These families are not made to be efficient, they are made as advertisements. The solution is to always use Autodesk default families if possible. Then try to have your own team of people to make custom families. Mistake number three, use work sets for visibility. There are some confused users that use the work sets feature to control visibility in Revit. Here's an example. Somebody created work sets for elements like doors, roofs and walls. They will uncheck visible in all views for a specific category like doors. This is the worst possible way you can use work sets. To control visibility, always use the visibility graphics menu by using shortcut VG. You can find the doors category and uncheck it if necessary. Combine this technique with the view templates to automate the visibility setting of all views. Work sets are supposed to be used for the performance of a model. For small to medium projects, this is what your work set should look like. Create different work sets for levels and grids and link files. The work sets feature is not available in Revit LT. Mistake number four, go back to CAD for detailing. There is a persistent myth that Revit is bad for detailing. Therefore, it is a good idea to go back to CAD for that specific task. That's just a bad idea. Revit detailing tools are often misunderstood. Don't hesitate to use features like drafting views. This type of view is not linked to the 3D model where you can draft anything without being worried of hurting your Revit model. In this example, we mess around with detail components and detail lines to create our detailing. When creating a section, callout or elevation, you can use the reference other view and select a drafting view. This way, the view will be properly referenced when placed on sheet, but will still be an entirely 2D view. Another way to detail is to use real sections and callouts, but to shut down the model. In this example, we create a section. In the instance properties, you will find the display model parameter. When turned off, everything becomes invisible except datum elements like levels and grids. This way you can create a 2D detail while still keeping references to the model. You can also use the half tone setting, which will turn all model elements into a light gray. Mistake number five, use fake tags and dimensions. In this example, you can see two wall tags. They seem similar, but they are different. The first one is a legit wall tag. To modify the wall type mark value, you have to select the wall first and the label will become blue. If you go to the wall type properties, you can see the same type mark value. The tag below is a fake DOM tag. It is made with text and lines and isn't linked to the model. A lot of beginners like to use this CAD technique in Revit. This is a terrible way to tag elements. Always use legit tags. Mistake number six, overuse 2D elements. In this example, there seems to be stairs at the bottom right of the building. Until you zoom in, click on the stairs and realize it is only a bunch of lines. Indeed, if you go to the 3D view, you realize that there's no stairs. Many beginners think that they can save time by drafting major elements instead of modeling them. In most cases, it is a mistake that will cause you trouble at some point. Mistake number seven, create DOM legends and plan notes. Here is an example of a really terrible way to create plan notes. Create the text next to your plan view. Then create a line circle with text value. 
Everything has to be manually adjusted and there's no link between the legend and the node bubble. The smart way to do it is to create a generic annotation family that is linked to a node block schedule. When you modify one of the bubble, the schedule is automatically updated. This way, you know the node numbers will always match the legend. We have a full tutorial on this topic. Make sure to check the link in the video description. Mistake number 8. Overmodel small 3D elements. Some beginners get really excited and like to overmodel everything. You have to be careful and only model what is actually required, depending on the needs of your client. Modeling wall sweeps like in this example is fine if you are going to use the model for renderings, but a 2D detail is fine in most cases. Mistake number 9. Delete important elements by mistake. Some beginners don't realize how destructive the delete command can be. I've witnessed a few major projects where a beginner deleted a level by mistake. That is a really big deal that can have awful consequences on your project. Make sure to learn about the hide tool. Hiding will make an element invisible in the view while still keeping it in the project. Select an element. In the modify tab, click on the lab icon and select hide element. You can also find this tool by using the right click menu or by using shortcut EH. You can click on the lamp icon at the bottom of the view to reveal all hidden elements. Select them and click on unhide elements to make them visible in this view again. Another feature that you should use is the pin tool. When elements are selected, click on this icon in the contextual tab. If you try to delete a pin element, you will get a warning and the element will not be deleted. You have to unpin the element before you can modify it. Mistake number 10. Moving elements by mistake. Beginners will often move elements without realizing it. By default, you can select and move an element in a single click. This feature often causes a lot of problems. At the bottom right of your screen, you have multiple selection options. One of them is called Drag Elements on Selection. Click on the icon to deactivate it. When this option is deactivated, you always need to select an element before you are able to move it. Mistake number 11. Place building far from internal origin. The coordinate system in Revit is an absolute mess. One of the things you need to know is that there is an invisible internal origin in all Revit projects. This origin cannot be moved. By default, this origin will be used when importing and exporting files to CAD or other formats. In this example, we link a CAD file using the origin to origin positioning option, only to realize that we can't see the CAD file. That's because we position the building really far away from the internal origin. The origin cannot be moved, so make sure to properly pick a position when you are starting a project. In our basics template, we use reference planes to indicate the position of the internal origin. Check the link in the description if you are interested. Mistake number 12. Place too many RPC families for renderings. Creating renderings using a Revit model is getting more popular. However, you need to be careful when you add components specifically to embellish your rendering views. In this example, we get a bunch of RPC entourage families. If you are not careful, you might end up printing views with those random entourage symbols. You can turn them off by using the visibility graphics menu. If you want to be really safe, you can also create an additional work set called renderings. Make the work set invisible by default. Make sure to place all RPC components in that work set. You can then activate the work set using visibility graphics in the view you will be using for renderings. Mistake number 13. Don't keep an organized project browser. In this example, we have a project where the project browser is an absolute mess. There is hundreds of views that are poorly named and poorly classified. Now have a look at this project. Everything is properly organized. The views are numbered so they appear in an order that makes sense. The families are named with a prefix to indicate the name of the business and the family category. If you want to have this project browser organization in your project, make sure to download our basics template. If you like this video, make sure to check out our brand new basics 2020 learning package. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.